Hello everyone, welcome back to eHealth Indonesia 2020 Goals Online. This is institution webinar series. My name is Anton Hilman. I'm going to be moderating this webinar. This webinar is going to be presented by the representative of the Trinity College Dublin. Please stay tuned until the end of the webinar because after the presentation, we will hold a Q&A session. If you have any question about the presentation, and anything related to the institution, you can submit your question in YouTube's comment section anytime throughout the presentation. And now, please welcome the representative of the Trinity College Dublin. Hi, everyone. Thank you for having me and thank you for e um, EHEF for organizing this fair and this online event. My name is Kim Boyle and I'm the Regional Manager for uh, Trinity College Dublin uh, for Southeast Asia and Oceania. Um, so if I could share my screen, I'll start my presentation. I hope you can see that okay. And um, so you can see there, there's a beautiful aerial shot of our campus situated here in the heart of Dublin. And um, I've also put up the FAQ section of our website for uh, the COVID-19 situation and how Trinity has been handling that. So I'm going to open uh, my presentation by talking about some of our famous notable alumni. Uh, the title of my presentation was, do you see yourself as the next Nobel Prize winner? because in reality, we have produced a number of notable alumni and Nobel Prize winners, and we want our future students to be able to imagine themselves in the same situation in the future. So we have Ernest Walton, who won a Nobel Prize. He's a scientist for splitting the atom. William Campbell, who won a Nobel Prize for finding a cure for river blindness. Some of our famous uh, literary giants uh, that we're very proud to have produced as our notable alumni, Jonathan Swift, who wrote Gulliver's Travels, Oscar Wilde, who wrote um, many uh, books and plays and poems, Samuel Beckett, who won a Nobel Prize for Literature, and even the writers of the TV show Game of Thrones, uh, of the modern TV show, met at Trinity. They actually met through the societies and they were studying a different program. So it goes to show that through the people you meet and the things you get involved in, it could completely change the way uh, you thought your life was going to go or the trajectory of your career uh, through your experiences that you have while you're at Trinity. So I'm just going to tell you a little bit about Ireland as well as a destination to come and study in. I don't know if you're familiar with it as a destination, but this little video will give you a snapshot. <laughs> So this is where we're located. Uh, we're in the middle of the North Atlantic, right next door to the UK. A lot of people get confused and think that Ireland is part of the UK, whereas in actual fact, we're a, a young republic independent country. It is confusing because part of our country, the North, about a third of our island is part of the UK. But in the Republic, we have our own education and governmental policies. Uh, we have our own setup and way of doing things. 
Um, so to get to Ireland from Indonesia, I've traveled to Indonesia multiple times uh, last year in person for the for the European Higher Education Fair. Um, and I usually get there through one stop, maybe through Dubai or the Middle East, uh, continental Europe or the UK. So you can typically get to Ireland in about 15 um, hours. So what else about Ireland? We're, we consistently rank as a very friendly, welcoming and safe country. You've probably met an Irish person in your time. Hopefully they were friendly. A lot of people claim Irish heritage worldwide. There are actually 80 million people worldwide who claim Irish heritage because we have a long history of uh, Im immigration for economic and political reasons. Uh, so uh, chances are you've probably met an Irish person along the way somewhere. Our own population is quite small, uh, 4.5 million, about 1 million in our capital city in Dublin. But as, as I said, we have far uh, global reach around the world through our diaspora. Uh, we're an English speaking country. English is our first language. Uh, we have a long tradition in education excellence and we're the first in Europe for the completion of third level education. So this focus on education in Ireland has helped us develop a very skilled, very much sought after workforce that because of other reasons and that reason, we've attracted a lot of leading global companies to come and set up uh, their um, international headquarters here in Ireland. And then around the global companies have come and set up a lot of cottage industries have um, have sprung up as well. And this has uh, led to very innovative and creative culture. We have a very strong currency and um, a very strong economy. We use the euro as our currency and we have very welcoming stay back visas. So our undergraduate students are allowed to stay back for two years and work. And our postgraduate students can stay back, or sorry, our undergraduate students can stay back for one year and work, and our postgraduate students can stay back for two years and work. So, as I mentioned, we're the multinational hub where uh, we attract many global leading global companies from around the world. Uh, we have many of the top ICT companies, nine out of the top 10, eight out of the top 10 gaming companies, eight out of the top 10 pharmaceutical companies diagnostic companies, uh, medical devices, and uh, 50% of the world's leading financial services firms. So in terms of career prospects and job opportunities, there's a lot of opportunities here in Ireland uh, in these industries. So a little bit more about our capital city. You can see on the right hand side, a beautiful aerial shot of our city. It's very flat. We don't have a lot of uh, high rise. We don't have any high rise or skyscraper buildings. Um, we don't have the congestion and the pollution that you'd find in a lot of major cities around the world. Um, it's a small city. It's very easy to get around uh, by foot or on bicycle or by public transport. It's easy to get out of the city. So you can be at the beach or the forest or the park very quickly. Um, you can be at the mountains. You can be across the country in about two and a half hours. And we have a very different landscape on the West Coast of the country, it's called the Wild Atlantic Way. Um, and then on your doorstep, you have outside of the university walls, you have museums, theatres, art galleries, festivals, uh, so much going on, restaurants and cafes. In normal times, it's really bustling and, and very vibrant. Our campus is unique. It's walled right in the heart of the city centre. Uh, we're also very close to the international airport and in normal times, our students would really take advantage of that and hop on a cheap flight um, to continental Europe for the weekend and be back for their classes on a Monday morning. So we consider ourselves a 16th century university with 21st century knowledge. We have many beautiful historical buildings on our campus. It's got cobblestones, it's very leafy and peaceful and tranquil and playing parks, but we've also many modern facilities as well and, and many um, modern state-of-the-art labs. So I'm just going to tell you a little bit about uh, our history. This is a little video that's going to, to showcase our university and how we've developed over the last 425 years. You'll spot some of our famous alumni in this as well. Inspiration has lived here since 1592. And more than 400 years later, it's still going strong. Inspiration has helped burgeoning writers put pen to paper and given world leaders a head start. It has set the stage for budding playwrights and created characters that will never die. For countless
countless actors who started here, inspiration has played a part. Work done in Trinity helped split the atom, battled cancer, and guided man's first giant leap. From here, we've inspired people around the world. But even with this proud history, we are firmly focused on the future. Today, we are making new discoveries and inspiring the next generation of history makers. that little video about Trinity. So as you saw, we were founded in 1592, actually by Queen Elizabeth I, under the same legal charter as Oxford and Cambridge. And we offered a similar model of education today. Over the centuries, we've managed to remain Ireland's number one university. We're currently ranked 101 in the world on the QS rankings. We're the 17th most international university in the world. We're the first in Europe for producing entrepreneurs and for being innovative. And we're the only Irish university who is a member of LIRU. It's a prestigious league of European research universities. We consider ourselves comprehensive with nearly 600 course options across our faculties and skills. So you may have seen a picture, be familiar with this picture. It's actually our library in the middle of our campus. It's a very famous library. It attracts a lot of visitors from around the world normally. Um, it, it ranks as one of Ireland's top three tourist attractions. You might recognize it um, from maybe the Star Wars movies, if you're, if you're a Star Wars fan, and the modern Star Wars movies, uh, the Jedi Library is modeled on our library. And one of our more, most famous visitors was George Lucas, the Star Wars creator who took inspiration from our library for his movies. The most important thing to remember is that we are a working, it is a working library. Um, students who come to study at Trinity, depending on the program, will have the option to do an archive project on one of our many beautiful manuscripts. We have over 6 million items reflecting 400 years of academic development in our libraries. We're legal depositories, so that means we get a copy of every book printed in Ireland and the UK since 1801. So you have a wealth of resources at your fingertips if you're to come and study at Trinity. I'm going to talk a little bit more about our programmes. And this is the way our university is structured. So we have three faculties and 24 schools. It's easier to say what we don't offer than what we do offer because we offer so much, but we don't offer veterinary science. We don't offer studio art or architecture. We do have the history of art and the history of architecture. So we rank across our faculties and schools in many subject areas. We have 18 subject areas in the top 100 and four in the top 50, including classics, which is number 13 in the world, and nursing, which is number 25 in the world. English is also in the top 30 in the world. This is the way our programs are structured. So we have a one-year foundation program taught at our affiliated college called Marino Institute, which is about five kilometers from the main campus. This is aimed at undergraduate students who are taking a curriculum that we don't accept for a direct entry, so they can do a one year foundation program. All our bachelor programs are four years long across our three faculties. We have specialized programs and we have some common entry um, um, liberal programs as well. Our, we have professional programs as an option, so medicine and dentistry are five years long and then there's an the option to continue uh, certain degrees into a five-year program and, uh, and um, graduate with a professional master's. All our postgraduate programs are one calendar year long. Um, and then we have the research options as well. So a little bit about our foundation program. Uh, we offer two pathways. Uh, one is an arts and humanities pathway. The other is STEM and health science pathway. All students will take core modules in English and math, um, and then they take elective modules depending on the pathway. The program is designed and taught and governed and developed by Trinity Academics. So they have full 100% oversight on this program. And uh, we don't accept students from other foundation programs into Trinity. We only accept uh, students from our own specialized foundation program. Um, and across the three, across the two pathways, excuse me, we have 50 program areas and options to progress onto. 
So we have many programs to choose from once a student graduates from the foundation program. Then one of our specialized business degree, moving on to undergraduate degrees, um, is global business. It's similar to an international uh, business degree, and it has all the components of an international business degree, such as accountancy, finance, marketing, uh, administration, operations, management, um, advertising. And there is a strong focus on innovation and entrepreneurship. As I said, uh, Trinity is number one in Europe for producing entrepreneurs. Um, and this is one of the reasons it's there's a strong focus in many of our programs on innovation and entrepreneurship. Um, and it's taught at our brand new business school. You can see a picture of it on the right there that uh, just opened last year. It's been nominated for many architectural awards. It's quite an impressive building and it is situated on our main campus in the heart of our main campus in Dublin. So then our undergraduate programs, we have the option uh, to do, of joint honours. Um, so this is where you'll, you have the option to take two subjects and depending on what subject you're interested in, you have flexibility as to what you specialise in and when you specialise. So it's similar to a double major. Um, you can major in one a minor in another subject or you could just major in one subject by itself or you could study two subjects equally 50 50 for the duration of the year so many combinations to choose from as well i just want to mention our glba program between trinity and columbia university and we're we've taken our thir third cohort it's a new program this year um, it's where you study two years at Trinity and two years at Columbia in the US and you graduate with two degrees. Um, it's very academically rigorous and challenge, challenging program. It's a US style application with an early closing date of the 2nd of January. You apply through the School of General Studies in uh, Columbia and you're guaranteed accommodation for the four years of the program and there are excellent scholarships available as well. Um, and then we have um, a number of programs to choose from. And depending on what you choose to study at Trinity, that will determine what you can go on and study in Colombia. And um, we have choices across the arts and humanities and also across the STEM subjects as well. So moving on to some of our STEM subject, subjects at Trinity. So engineering for, is a four year degree. So you study um, common engineering subjects for the first two years of the programme, and then you specialise in year three. So it gives you a bit of a flavour into all the engineering uh, disciplines before you go and specialise, and that helps you um, develop a multidisciplinary mindset. If you go on to, you can graduate after four years with a, with a bachelor degree, um, or you have the choice to go on and do five years. And in year four, you have some really nice options there, one of which is a, a, a guaranteed internship with industry. After that, you'll do your capstone project in year five, and you'll graduate with both a bachelor and a master's degree in engineering. This will allow you to register many of the professional bodies around the world that represent uh, engineers and to also sign off on your own designs. So science as well is another specialized type of STEM degree that we have. We have four strands to choose from and 22 specializations. Again, you study common science subject areas for the first two years in the strand that you apply for, and then you have the choice to specialize in your third year. There's also the option to take elective credits across all our under, undergraduate programs where you will um, take modules from other departments across the university to broaden your mindset and broaden your knowledge. So engineering and natural science and computer science are three of our 24 schools come under this new multidisciplinary approach called E3, the E3 initiative we're just rolling out. It's, uh, it stands for engineering, emerging technologies and environment. So what this means for our incoming students and our prospective students is that we're building two new buildings, two brand new state-of-the-art facilities. We're developing new programs, opening up new places on our existing programs, and we're offering more scholarships in these areas. And the point of the E3 initiative is to find a multidisciplinary balanced, balanced approach uh, to a lot of the modern day problems that we're facing in our modern world. So one of our new buildings is called the Innovation District. Trinity is spearheading on this, but we're working with other uh, HEIs in Ireland. 
with government and with industry as well to build this innovation district. You can see in the green spot in the foreground is our is going to be the new district and in the background is um Sorry. In the background is our main um, uh, our main campus. I'm just going to change my presenter view. Sorry, um, one second. Then I hope that's better. Um, I was just I just got a note to say that you, you could see um, the settings in, in the presentation. So I hope you can you can see it better now. Um, so around where the Innovation District is and our main campus is where you could see all the industry, um, all the large multinational corporations and their headquarters are based. So we get to work very closely with industry um, purely because of our geographical location, but also because of the um, the um, the prestige of Trinity as well. And um, so industry executives, they help design our programs, teach in our programs, provide us with internships, and most importantly, provide job opportunities for our, uh, for our students. So some of our E3 programs, uh, one of our E3 programs point, of, uh, point out um, at postgraduate level is computer science. Uh, we have four strands to choose from data science, future network systems, augmented and virtual reality and intelligent systems. Data science and intelligent systems uh, fill up very quickly. So that's why I've highlighted them in red. They're very popular. Um, but this is a master's really for those looking to, to develop in the field of, of computer science. So one of our mass, one of our popular masters in our arts and humanities um, faculty is a master's of education. There are 11 strands to choose from in this master's. Um, and it is one of the cheapest masters you can do at Trinity. <clears throat> I think the fees are around 12,500 euro. Um, so it's quite economical. Uh, it's really aimed at those looking again to progress their career in education, maybe specialize in a field as well. <clears throat> so our School of Nursing is um, number 25 in the world and we have many masters to choose from. Um, so I'm just going to tell you a little bit about our community um, and student life at Trinity. So we, um, as I mentioned, we're number one in, in Europe for producing entrepreneurs and that a lot of our programs have a focus on innovation and entrepreneurship. But there is an arm of the university that is dedicated to innovation and entrepreneurship. Uh, they've done very well over the last five years. They take up a whole floor of the, of the new business school. Um, they help students set up their own companies, uh, you know, uh, generate ideas, get patents and citations approved, um, get licenses. They've helped raise investment and revenue. Um, and this, this is why we've done really well in this space, because there's a buy-in from the top of the university down. Uh, there's a lot of focus, a lot of resources being put into this area at Trinity. So in terms of college life, we have a vibrant international student community, 120 student societies and 50 sports clubs. Um, we have some of the oldest societies in the world, the Phil and the His, their two debating societies. You wouldn't believe what you'll find in the middle of our campus, state-of-the-art sport facility with 25 meter pool, fitness equipment, training rooms, playing fields, tennis courts, theaters, galleries, and museums. Then we have support for our international student community. Uh, we have a space called Global Room that is staffed by people from our team and the global relations uh, team and um, a team of global ambassadors. These are student ambassadors. They run our airport meet and greet. They run extracurricular programs and they do a lot of uh, social events and they're doing a lot online at the moment because of the, the COVID situation. Um, so they're running a lot of very interesting online events. Um, and then most importantly, we have our uni body system where you can go online and you can chat to our current students. And sometimes prospective students really want to have that peer to peer chat and you can do that. I've put in the link there on the slides as well. So then we have all our other student services and supports uh, that are available for all of our, um, 
our student body across the administrative health and well-being, academic and student life space as well. Then in terms of accommodation, we have some limited on-campus accommodation. Most of our undergraduate students are housed at Trinity Hall, which is about four kilometres from our main campus. Um, it's well connected by Lewis, which is our light rail tram. We have some city centre Trinity approved accommodation as well, Cabinet Court and Binary Hub, which are in walking distance of the university. The most important thing to note is that it's all our all our accommodation is apartment style living uh, with mostly single rooms, some twin rooms. We've very good security on site as well. Uh, most of them are gated communities um, and they do their own social events and have their own common areas as well. In terms of admission requirements, I'm not going to get into the details, but if you have any specific questions, you can ask me at the end. Um, and I will share the slides um, with the organizers if you want to have access to this slide. And um, I've put up the, the admission requirements for the foundation program, our undergraduate programs and our postgraduate programs as well. For fees, it really depends on the program. I've put in the link to our full fee schedule. The fees differ per program. But generally, uh, approximately, you're looking at between 16,000 euro and 18,000 euro for a foundation program, and um, 19,500 to, to 25,500 for most of our undergraduate programs, but medicine and dentistry is 47,000 euro per year. Postgraduate programs, anywhere from 13,000 euro to 24,000 euro. To live in Dublin, you're looking at approximately needing 15,000 euro for um, for living expenses, and that includes your accommodation, and that's for an academic year. We've many scholarships available. I look after the Global Excellence Scholarship. Most of them are a tuition fee deduction across all the, all the program areas. Then we have our E3 specialist scholarships in engineering, natural science, and the School of Physics as well. Trinity is dictating LPDP approved for Indonesia. Our foundation scholarship is our main undergraduate pot, which is awarded in the middle of the second year of the undergraduate program, where students take extra elective exams in their program area. And then we have many other school scholarship, uh, specific scholarships, such as for the law school or the business school, and that's available on the scholarship section of our study website, and I have the link there also. So then for... Um, for other contacts, you can contact me. I'm the regional manager. My email address is there. Uh, for the International Foundation Program, we have a dedicated coordinator that you're welcome to communicate with directly. For any of our master's uh, business programs, we have 11 um, very good programs that are very popular in our skill of business, but they deal with their own queries. So you can contact them at business.masters. And then for applications, uh, you'll be dealing with academic registry, which is our centralized admissions office. So I don't do admissions, but I am here to liaise. You apply directly online through our courses website and you will be dealing with uh, the academic registry directly in relation to anything around your, your application. And then I just want to finish by inviting you to come and join our 140,000 strong alumni network across 158 countries and possibly see yourself as a future uh, famous alumni of Trinity or a, a famous uh, future Nobel Prize winner such as Ernest Walton, William Campbell and Samuel Beckett. So that's the end of my presentation and I'm happy to take questions. I'm sorry for any technical difficulties in the middle there. Yeah, I will try with my... With, we can uh, hear you now. Now we can hear you. Ah, okay. <laughs> I think we have the, the, the technical problem. Okay. Do you hear me now, Ines and Mrs. Kim? Yes, I can hear you now, yes. Okay, okay. The first question is, what is the equivalent GPA second class honor degree for Indonesian student willing to enroll to your university as a postgraduate student? Um, I'm not sure. Can, can, can you say that? What's the qualification again? What is the equivalent GPA second class honor degree for Indonesian student willing to enroll to your university to um, postgraduate program? It really depends. We look for anything between a three and a 3.3, .3, I would say. 
some programs are more competitive than others. It really depends on the uh, caliber of the other applicants that you're going up against in, in that year for that program. Um, if you have a lower GPA than three, I would say don't let that put you off. Um, sometimes they look at work experience equivalency as well or any extra training that has been done. So, um, so it's, quite, it's quite flexible in, in that sense. Okay, thank you for your answer. Next question, it goes, is there any fully funded scholarship offered by the government of Ireland or by your university for international students? Yes, there is a fully funded scholarship. It's actually called the Government of Ireland Scholarship. So um, that's on our website. I can I can put the, the link in the chat if you want. Can the viewers see the chat or... Um, but if you, even if you Google it, if you have a look, there is the Government of Ireland. I don't think it's fully funded. I think it's €10,000 of tuition fees, and but they, they provide a living stipend as well. Our scholarships, institutional scholarships, are just a, usually a partial tuition fee deduction of usually between €3,000 and €5,000 uh, of the, the first year fees in the programme. But as I said, we are... Trinity is one of the only Irish uh, institutions who is LPDP approved for LPDP scholarships in Indonesia. And then we have an agreement with all the other HIs in Ireland uh, with DICTI for uh, fully funded PhD scholar scholarships as well. So, The next question is still about the scholarship. And now, do you have full scholarship for the for Master of Business major? No, so the business degree, uh, the business master's scholarships are also deductions. I think they do, they have three, a couple for three to 5,000 euro, but then they have two 10,000 euro, which is, I think, about a 50% tuition fee deduction. So they do have some good scholarships there, but they're not full scholarships. Okay, thank you. Next question, it goes, is there any professional certificate in mental health offered by your university for bachelor in science. Thank you. Bachelor of science. Uh, we don't, I think we in have mental a health. In nursing. I think we have a master's in nursing and, and mental health. Um, and then we have a couple of social work um, degrees as well. Uh, our master's, sorry, uh, in our school of social work and social policy. But I think the closest would be nursing. I think I had that on my slide. Yeah. Let me just double check that. Yeah, MSc in mental health. Okay, in thank you. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Next question is, it goes, I'm interested in the LLM program in your university, and I'm curious about the different of section A and section B in the module of LLM program. Um, difference between? Between uh, different of section A and section B in the module of LLM programs. I I'm, think the student asked you more detail about the, the curriculum of the LLM yeah. program. Yeah. I'm not familiar with the details of the curriculum in the LLM program off the top of my head. But if you get in touch with me by email, I can put you in touch with the law school directly um, and I can put you in touch with the, with the organizer of our master's programs in law and they could give you more detailed information on the curriculum. It sounds like you've done your research though, so which is good. Um, but I'm not familiar with the intricate uh, differences between the, uh, between the, 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 in the teaching of the curriculum, so. Thank you. Next question is about the part-time job. Is it possible to do it during the, the study? Yes. So students can work for up to 20 hours a week during term time and 40 hours a week during holidays. The minimum wage in Ireland is 10 euro per hour, but many employers pay well above the minimum wage. Um, so there are good opportunities here to be able to top up your income as well. You can also work for the university as I said, we have our ambassador program. We have about 25 student ambassadors. And I know there are other ambassador programs as well. So there's a lot of opportunity for part-time work within the university also. Thank you for your answer. Next question, it goes, 
Does previous organizational experience or academic special achievement require to apply for postgraduate study in your university? And again, about the scholarship available in your, in your university. So I've already answered the scholarship, so I'm not going to go into the details again. Um, but you don't have to have work experience to come for a master's. Like many of our students apply directly from bachelor and that's fine. And they'll be assessed on their academic merit and academic grades. So you don't have to have work experience to come and study master's here. Some right. programs would like work experience, such as the MBA. I think that's the only program that has a requirement for a minimum of three years work experience. But I think that's the case for a lot of MBAs. So. Okay, thank you. The next question, and it would be the last question. Okay. What is the biggest challenge faced by the international student study in your university? Thank you. I suppose the biggest challenge right now is that a lot of the education is being delivered online. You know, we're offering a hybrid approach where students can still go onto campus for tutorials and lab teaching and small classroom. But the majority of the, of the teaching realistically is happening online. And I think for a fabulous university like Trinity, which is in the city center and has fantastic, usually has fantastic student activities and lots of clubs and societies. I think that's a challenge for students like uh, in, it impacting their student experience. Um, you know, while they're here in Dublin or uh, while they're taking part in our academic programs, uh, they're probably not getting uh, the full student experience that they deserve right now. And I can imagine that's the biggest challenge for them. All right, thank you for the answer. And that's the end of our Q&A session. Just a reminder okay. uh, for all the, the audience, you can still connect with the representative through the information given earlier. Thank you, Ms. Kim, for your excellent presentation. Have a good day. Thank you, you too. Take care. Yeah, thank you all for watching and don't forget to attend our institution webinar series tomorrow. See you tomorrow and have a good evening to all Bye. of you. Bye.